Hey everyone, today's video is really an update from a video I did at least a year ago, if not longer. I think it's been longer. This is in the home theater category that uh, I did a few videos on when I was building out my uh, living room home theater system. I was to some extent building it from scratch and I had you know a big plan of what I wanted to do. And those videos are actually some of the, my more popular videos on my channel even though I don't focus on it a lot. So I wanted to kind of do a follow-up video uh, about those. And so a year and a half later, where am I at with my home theater system and what's working and what didn't work. So the core or the nucleus part of my uh, home theater is really the Denon home uh, receiver, home theater receiver. And Let's see if I can remember the model numbers, but it's the AVR4311, Denon AVR 4311. And it's, I still really like the receiver, and a lot of the comments I got on the video was that, uh, you know, for the high end speakers you're buying and some other stuff, you should have gone more high end on your receiver. And my comment is, yeah, maybe so, but we're getting into a price range that I don't value it enough to spend more than what I did. It's nice, but the return on spending more than what this one was is to me uh, not quite worth it is point one. And then point two is that what I've seen, at least when I was buying this, the uh, receivers that were more higher end didn't have the web or internet capabilities or airplay capabilities that I wanted. Uh, what I wanted and why I held off for such a long time on rebuilding a home theater system is because I wanted it to be modern. I wanted it to be connected to the internet. I wanted it to be connected to the media that I had on my network. I didn't want to just play CDs or play DVDs or Blu-rays. And that'd be it. You know, I wanted it connected, and and that's what I bought. And the Denon one here, it uh, I would say it exceeded my expectations as far as connectivity. As far as what I use the most is the Pandora channel. That's it's really awesome to be able to stream Pandora from your home theater. You can switch channels just right on the TV. I can do it on my iPhone. I can do it on my iPad. Um, very nice, very easy to access. Simplicity is what I, I really wanted. Uh, okay, so the home theater, sorry, home theater, obviously. The receiver has been very good. It's had, in my view, really no problems. There's been some firmware patches that came out that uh, they take a long time to install, and um, but they're fine. They've they've not really added any new functionality. Uh, there's AirPlay is available on this one, but they did this weird thing where they advertise AirPlay, and you're supposed to get it free, but you got to send in a form and. I haven't done that yet. It's they're kind of being difficult about it. It's, they should know that if you have it, it should give it to you. So I'm not too enthused about that, but <clears throat> everything else is fine. It does have the HDMI 1.3, sorry, 1.4 standard for 3D. So if I wanted to run a 3D movie, I can uh, I can do so through the receiver here. Uh, and utilize the the Blu-ray player I bought. So let's talk about that next. The the Blu-ray player. It's this one up here. Pretty slim profile. It's a Sony. It's the BDP S770. Uh, it's okay. You know, it's it looks nice. Uh, it sounds really good. You can distinctly tell that you're watching a DVD rather than streaming something from Netflix or Amazon. Even, you know, both of those look nice. Um, but the Blu-ray is just top quality, has the most megabits per second. 
you're gonna get better sound, uh, etc. So it's really nice. Blu-ray players are not too expensive now, so if you're, you know, waffling on whether you want to get one or not, it's probably worth it to get get one, especially if you don't have a method to connect to different um, web standards, so web, media content, so Netflix, Amazon, Vudu, uh, Pandora. The Blu-ray players nowadays all come with, uh, with uh, that connectivity ability. I would say that the Sony one here is just fine. It I don't really like the menu navigation so much. It's it's kind of a a loop of menus that keeps on going and there's too much embedded free content that it's low value content. It doesn't you know end up not watching it so much. Um so you know as far as the Blu-ray goes, I'm glad I bought it. Glad I bought the Sony. No manufacturing problems with it. No, you know, no crashes of it. I would say that loading the disc and booting up the disc is slow. And just my comment of Blu-ray overall is that they're just if you buy a disc, it's basically between twenty and thirty dollars. So the discs are expensive in my view, and they come fully loaded with previews and advertisements and just. It's just kind of a pain, you know? You go on Netflix and you click the button and it starts the movie. So, paying 30 bucks for a disc and have it front loaded with the advertising that you can't really skip through is, I don't know, it's not very consumer friendly. So, um, one more comment about the receiver is that the remote control that came with the Denon, it's very simple. It's a simple control. It actually came with two, so I'm showing the, the larger one here. The control is actually, even though it doesn't look too fancy, people kind of think it's a, you know, a junky control. It actually does a lot universally. You, I can connect all my devices basically, TV, Blu-ray player, obviously the receiver, uh, cable box, all except for the Apple TV. So the, the control is actually better than what I had expected as far as controlling other devices. Now, top of the stack here, Apple TV that I added. I'm actually a huge fan of Apple TV, and I hope Apple does not abandon the product at all. And you can go out there and research products like this, the Roku devices, and you read about those, and it looks like the Roku devices have more content you can get with it. Sure, it's just a more open-end system. They want as many vendors on the platform as possible. Apple, you're kind of closed into iTunes. They do have Netflix, they do have YouTube, some other things. More closed in platform. But the key, the why I love AirPlay and, and Apple, Apple TV rather, is if I, I already spoiled it there, it's the AirPlay functionality. You can use your iPad, you can use your iPhone, and just navigate through content, you know, in your lap, your phone, your iPad, and cruise through it. You find a YouTube video, you find you know whatever else on the internet, you push a little button on your iPad screen and it streams to your big TV. So I just kind of love that. You know, it's uh, very handy to find and acquire content and just project it onto your TV. So I'm, I'm just showing you the Apple TV screen here, nothing too fancy, but uh, what I'm ended up doing is because Netflix quality, as far as the movies you can get, has um, decreased lately. I'm using the iTunes movie rentals much more. You know, one or two a weekend, and you know, you can say I watched Hangover Part Two up there. It's it works really well. It's simple. Uh, it's same it's basically the same pricing as other vendors. So a huge fan of Apple TV. You know, when it's on a screensaver mode, it shows your pictures, different screensavers, um, you know, it's nice. So it's, it's popping up a built-in screensaver here of animals. So that's kind of fun, you know, watching dinner and have the TV on, on standby mode and just kind of pops up the screensaver and whatnot. So high recommendation for Apple TV. I hope they come out with a new version. I hope they don't abandon the product. Uh, the downside of Apple TV, it's only 720p right now. At the end of the day, it's not a huge deal, but it would be nice to have it 1080p. 
Uh, you can also run some games through here. You can play AirPlay games over your Apple TV on your big TV. So using your iPad as a controller or iPhone, that's kind of fun. There's a little bit of lag between uh, your your movement on the phone or iPad to how it shows up on the screen. So some games are better than others. All right, let's move on to some of the things. And that would be the center channel that I bought. I have a BMW uh, CMC center channel. <clears throat> I forget the exact model number. But uh, this is one that it was the top of the line. Sorry, it's it's for this CM series. It's kind of a mid-range uh, BMW speaker. It's not their top of the line, but it's uh, pricey. It's big. Um, you can see it's well, how I had this aligned here. It's not absolutely perfect. It would have been ideal if it would have been right under the TV, but that's not going to happen. It's it's a huge speaker. It's probably 11 inches deep. Uh, you look it up on the specs, but maybe 10 to 15 pounds itself. And I had to buy a special stand on the internet to uh, fit it. Um, can I have it in front of my fireplace that I never use anyway. So could look, it kind of blends in and actually don't notice it that much, but I would have preferred a more clean and nice setup here. So I would say that the center channel is fine. You know, I can hear voices uh, good through it. It's clear. It's not muffled. Um, I would say that going back to the receiver that I would have maybe liked, or what I think maybe is happening is the Denon could use just a little more mm, for a little more power um, coming through here. It's, it's a pretty powerful and can be very loud receiver, but there's something about the I wish the vocals of things when I'm watching movies was just a little more powerful. So it's not really the center channel. I, th I think that's maybe why people are telling me that to up the uh, quality of my receiver. It maybe takes a little more power to drive these BMW speakers. I've seen some people get some amps for it. So anyways, high quality center channel. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll recommend it if you have room. These ones do sound better than the lower end range of um, BMW center channels, but you got to have room for this thing. It's it's a beast. So let's let's move on here. Next up are my front channels, left and right BMW CMC nines, CM nines. Uh, all I can say is they're they sound good. Uh, they're loud, they're clear, they don't have as much bass as I would like. They're, uh, you know, I guess when I'm growing, growing up there wasn't uh, the concept of subwoofers, so maybe that's just the way things are now. The front speakers don't really come with a lot of uh, bass, but uh, so, I don't know, new way of doing things I guess, but could would have liked a little more bass with these. Um, but overall, good quality sound. They're pretty good in the room I have, and I think they, uh, they're great for home theater. So my subwoofer in the room here is the Epic subwoofer. It's uh, kind of dual firing 15 inch speakers that uh, are aligned back to back to each other to cancel out any kind of vibration. The subwoofer sounds great. It's very deep, thunderously deep, and it can rattle the house. I actually had some work done on the house, and I, if you saw my original video, I had some cabinets in the room that were rattling because of the subwoofer. I actually had changed the cabinets for other reasons. Yeah, that sound's gone now. Uh, I'd say the subwoofer is, it sounds fine, you know? But it looks like crap in my room here. It's just, it's too big. Um, you know, it's odd. It's kind of out of the way. It almost looks like an end table, but it looks like crap. It's, again, odd, uh, too big, and it is massively heavy, H hugely heavy. It's not something that a single person can easily pick up and move by themselves. 
So, I don't know what I can say more about it. It's, I'm not sure what the, a better, smaller alternative would have been for me. The BMW subwoofers, I, I hear mostly bad things about them. Um, you know, if I could find um, an equally powerful or close to the same power and deep booming subwoofer that I could hide a little more out of the way, I would probably swap it out. I don't have any complaints about the sound quality or anything like that. It's just the the sheer size of this thing is not working for me too much. And for the item that I held out the longest for, and I really, I really researched this thing for well over a year. You've seen my video on it, but this is the Sharp 70 inch. I forget the full model number, but it's the one that ends in the 735 uh, model number. It's a um, 2011 model, and again, the last three digits are 735. And what that basically means is it's the it has the backlighting and it has 3D. I believe, I know, the one down has the backlighting but without 3D. The first one, the third one down, neither has the 3D or the backlighting. So be very careful when you're shopping for these in this store. You can get the wrong one accidentally. Love the TV. I have, Again, I haven't had this grossly too long, but uh, maybe two to three months now. Maybe a little longer than that. Maybe less than six. And I'll say that uh, for the price and what you get out of this one and the quality so far, it's for me, it's the best TV out there. Sony finally, as of, uh, let's see, November, December of 2011, released their 65-inch TV. But it's still around $6,000. It's, you know, maybe you can, you can get it discounted somewhere, but... That's ridiculous. It's it, this one does basically the same thing. People will say the Sony has probably more true backlighting. <clears throat> Fine, but I've also seen every Sony. I think it's the 929 series set that I've ever seen has had some ghosting issues, and it just it just didn't look right. So so far, I'll say that you got to hunt for problems with this one that. You know, the normal, you know, when my wife watching this thing, she doesn't see any issues with the TV at all. But I, after a year of reading on ABS forums and other sites, you kind of hear different people evaluate TVs and, and, and they know what to look for. And there are a few things I do see on this TV as far as there's uh, dust bunny spots. that So when you have a moving video, you can kind of see cl cloudy, uh, like dirty parts in the back of the picture. It's not, to me, it's not a huge deal, but you do see that. <clears throat> and to sum up my research over a year doing this is every LCD is going to have an issue. It's just what issue do you want to deal with? Is it the, the uni uniformity of the picture? You know, the sets that have the edge lighting are going to have uniformity problems, uh, color unevenness, lighting unevenness. Uh, there's the cloudiness of images at times with the backlighting. Um, so anyways, all the LCDs have some trade-off that you're going to have to live with. I'll say that so far this is very good. It does have a soap opera effect to it that uh, you can minimize through some settings on here. Uh, I am seeing, for some reason, when I watch movies on Apple TV, a fast-paced kind of action movie, with a lot of uh, lights to it, there can be sometimes a little bit of a blue flare to the the screen and i'm so i'm till, still testing that on on um the deep blu-ray rather and some on the air channels i haven't seen it on i've only seen it on apple tv so far that's basically what i'm saying so i don't i don't know what's going on there yet but i'm seeing a little bit of a blue flame blue flare in in bright spots of the um the tvs it's not it's not intolerable at this point. It's something I'm monitoring. I still love the TV. Um, anyway, so that's the Sharp. It comes with the web connectivity. You can do firmware updates on this. 
I'll say that uh, with the receiver and you know the I have a lot of devices that can get on, can get on the internet in the first place. I don't I'm not really using the sharp Netflix or other delivered connectivity applications in the TV. It uh, when you do that it has an issue where you have to figure out how to route your sound route your sound back to your receiver. Um, some receivers aren't set up to do that very well. Mine is, but it's a little kludgy to do it. It does have a back channel um, a method to receive the sound from the TV. So anyways, I still love this TV. I recommend it. Um, let's move on to the next thing. Okay, hidden back here is an Apple, uh, I think it's the Airport Express. It's basically a wireless device that I have a wire uh, running from the back of the device to my Denon receiver. The Denon does not accept wireless connectivity, but it takes a wired connection. So I have a house which I'm challenged to run uh, networking wire through it. So I'm using this Apple. It's the coolest thing. They don't really advertise it at all, but for home theater stuff, this is perfect. It's, it has not been down. No connectivity issues really, but it picks up your wireless network and takes it to a wire and puts it into your your receiver or Xbox or something like that. So if you have that wiring problem, this is something to uh, check out. Another item I have here is what I have set up is a, kind of a mid-channel group of speakers. I think this is a left mid, I would consider it. Uh, anyways, this is the BNW DM602s. These are older speakers I just had anyways. They sound pretty good. Uh, it's not ideally what I would want for this channel, the set of speakers. <clears throat> what I'm seeing is that, I'm not going to show you, but the way my room is set up, I, I don't have an ideal room layout it's the it's i can't put these in a parallel uh set basically so they're not one is a little more forward and another one's a little more back anyway so <clears throat> another thing is these speakers a little bit are larger than than what i may want right here and because of their the size i have them on the floor and ideally i would like them more at a seating level you're on the sofa that it should be around ear level, and right now they're a little lower. Again, my system doesn't sound bad at all. It's just, if I'm being extra critical about things, I would have liked these a little smaller and a little more high off the ground. But you have to trade uh, <clears throat> that kind of stuff with the aesthetics of the room and having a big pole, you know, another table to uh, put the speaker on. So sound quality wise, these are fine. Um, probably a little more than what I need for for this uh, channel here. Okay. So it's not exactly home theater equipment here, but they're related in that I have a lot of my content, music, pictures, whatever else, backups for for uh, for my stuff on these uh, NAS servers, network attached storage. Uh, this is actually these are awesome. Um, I have other videos out there about it, but I'm big on home media and have it all in one place and having centralized backups and all that stuff. So I have it wired into a gigabyte uh, network and then the devices, my iPhones, my iPad can access these devices and of course any other computer in the house. These things, the, the great thing about these are they're highly, highly stable. Uh, amazingly stable. Uh, they're just on. They work. I can connect to them. Backups occur. Uh, I've recently installed some firmware on these that you know that's no problem doing either. But they were running 45 days straight since the last time I installed some firmware. I've had a power outage and I have the cyber power UPS device down there that uh, kicked in and you know it hit the logs and said it was on running on standby and the backup power and didn't have any issue and the power recovered and didn't suffer any downtime at all. So these things are great. I loaded them full of hard drives before the unfortunate event in Thailand 
that basically doubled, tripled the price of hard drives, and uh, I got lucky there. Thai, the Thai people certainly did not, and hopefully they recover soon. But uh, I got about 10 to 12 terabytes in this thing, these two devices. And I highly recommend these as well, and um, that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. So I want to talk quickly around, you know, I've showed you what I have done, but what what didn't I do with my home theater that I, I'm still working on? Uh, maybe I'll finish it out one day, but what I would have liked to do is add rear channel speakers and to me that's kind of a big gap I'm, I'm a little frustrated by that part and it all goes back to my room layout um, <clears throat> this is the best room in the house for my home theater but uh, the nature of the room I either have to run very long wires across the floor and on one side which I can tolerate but then on the other side, because there's a door, I have to, I would have to run a wire over a door frame and down and across some cabinets and, you know, then have the speaker kind of in the way. It, it makes it not ideal at all. Actually, extremely challenging. Um, so I'm a little disappointed with, with that. Um, <clears throat> I knew that would be a problem before I started. I've looked into putting speakers in the walls and again there seems I've had a couple of vendors out here to look at it and they've really been kind of idiots in my opinion that they seem reluctant, unskilled um, on how to do it. I, I just never got the sense of confidence that, uh, that I would want from these vendors that to allow them to go ahead and do it. So uh, maybe I'll continue that one day, but uh, ideally I would want some rear channel speakers, smaller in size, pretty good quality, at around, uh, you know, um, at ear level when you're sitting down. <laughs> Thinking about something else there. <clears throat> so that's what I really want to do. I, I think it's a gap in my system right now. I've switched around and moved, you know, listened to what it would sound like if I had them, and I'll say it sounded good, but you know, it's not something I'm, I'm entirely missing out on if I have kind of a double setup front. So that's where I, you know, this open hole in my my uh, home theater program right now. Uh, you know, I w I'm still thinking about maybe swapping out the subwoofer. Due to size, uh, I'll probably add on a new gaming system eventually here. I don't play games that much anymore, but uh, probably <clears throat> for a variety of reasons, upgrade to the new uh, Xbox, uh, whatever they call it, the 720 when it comes out. So uh, that, that's probably what I'll do eventually. Um, but that's it, folks. That's kind of what it looks like where it's at. Um, happy I undertook it. As far as the things I like the most, it's definitely the receiver. It's the TV, um, and then the speakers to some extent. It's speakers are kind of necessary evil. Uh, <clears throat> would I have picked BMW again? Good question. I, again, I don't want to discourage anyone from the BMW speakers. I'll have to say that, you know, I was really challenged finding other speakers that I liked out there as well. There, so um, I think I would just have to spend a lot more time researching, a lot more time uh, listening. I, I did spend a lot of time, but even more than what I did, and uh, <clears throat> pick something. So and maybe I would have ended up with the BMWs. I think my gap, my... My hesitation on them is that the sound quality is, it is very good for the highs, but the bass sound is really not there to some extent. They're expensive and they're made in China now. Um, 
so you're paying a big premium for them. 